Our first alert severe weather day continues into your Monday and possibly beyond as we are going to be tracking more rounds of strong to severe thunderstorms and that flash flood potential remains very high. I'll have the latest outlook for you. Hear how a Johnson County dad saved some of his family members from the flash flooding. Deputies and police perform an undercover operation that lands a man in jail on a human trafficking charge. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. We are tracking another stormy start to the work week. Thanks for staying up with us. I'm Kristen Kennedy. More storms are moving through the state, and they could bring flash flooding, heavy rain, and damaging winds. We begin with meteorologist Jim Caldwell on this first alert severe weather day. You know, Kristen, it's an unfortunate trend that we have been in for a while now. We were running with uh, significant flash flooding across parts of eastern Kentucky, not only early in the week, but last night as well, with some high water across parts of Lawrence. County. Tonight, we're tracking some showers and storms out there, but we're also tracking an area wide flash flood watch that includes everybody here. Everybody with the color of green shaded over you. So that's everyone in our area from uh, all the way into Covington down to Williamsburg and everywhere in between. Flash flood watch in place. Tonight, as we're checking with Defender, showers and thunderstorms have been showing up out to our northeast. Let me tell you why. This earlier, as it was passing through Maysville, was just absolutely incredible. I could see the storm from here in Lexington, roughly 75 miles away from where we are as a bird flies. And you could see the lightning. You could see the Everything. The structure of that cloud just absolutely incredible. It's weakened since then, but still producing some heavier rain as it works through Flemingsburg and through Fleming County, and it will drop in on the folks down to the south in Moorhead. This is a very similar path to what we were seeing last night. We had some high water issues in Fleming County and also in Round County last night, some mudslides, all kinds of other issues. So we'll continue to watch for that, even though this storm may not cause the same type of impact because it's not producing that same heavy rain over and over again like we were dealing with. Our breakdown for tomorrow, because we are talking severe weather chances and flash flood chances, of course. Muggy tomorrow morning, there might be an isolated shower or thunderstorm still living on. Then by the time we get into the afternoon, the coverage of storms starts to ramp up. Maybe some strong or severe with heavy rain possible through the evening and tomorrow night. That could, that could cause more flash flooding. We'll take a closer look coming up. After the flooding in Johnson County this week, one family is calling a relative a hero. Sean Stewart was with his stepson and father-in-law in their gun shop when the water came rushing in. Stewart says he got his stepson to safety and searched for his father-in-law. His father-in-law pulled himself to safety. I was in no trouble. Sean was in the worst trouble. My grandson's up on the hill hollering, point on the rescue over here. Get over here. Hollering, carrying on. <laughs> I think it scared him, him more than it did the rest of us. But now, uh, John's a lucky man. He's alive. After that whole scare, that man's son only had lacerations on his arm and had to get 16 stitches in the hospital. A group of veterans and volunteers were in Johnson County today helping flood victims. Team Rubicon is a veteran led disaster relief organization. They're conducting damage assessments, helping with debris removal and coordinating volunteers. Two Marine veterans founded the nonprofit Team Rubicon back in 2010 to provide assistance during the Haiti earthquake. A small church in central Kentucky wants to be a big help for flood victims in Johnson County. Leaders at Harbor Light Worship Center in Stanton saw what happened in eastern Kentucky and the images they say broke their hearts. So they decided to collect donations and raise money for victims. We as a community understand what Johnson County and the surrounding counties are going through because we've went through it before. The group has raised more than $1,800. Johnson Central High School is the distribution point for all donations going into Paintsville. A teenager is in jail tonight charged with human trafficking. Deputies in Franklin County arrested 19-year-old Jonathan Diaz at a motel in Frankfurt yesterday. Deputies believe he was using social media to target young girls. Tonight, WKYT Sam Smith is talking to the sheriff about how an undercover investigation led them to Diaz. The Franklin County Regional Jail is holding Jonathan Diaz right now. The sheriff's office, along with Georgetown Police, Suspect he's involved with human trafficking. 
just a horrible, horrible situation for these young girls. Early Saturday morning, officers performed an undercover operation at a motel in order to make the arrest. They say they were able to catch him in the act. And we were able to uh, recover a 15-year-old girl, uh, get her in protective custody. Uh, we were able to get the bad guy, uh, this Jonathan Diaz. We took him into custody without incident. Diaz is booked on a human trafficking charge. Melton says more charges could follow. We do believe that this individual has been doing this. This isn't the first time. Investigators believe he was targeting young girls in Franklin and Fayette counties. They say he was using social media to do it. Check your children's Facebook page, Instagram. Check those things out and, and see who they're talking to and what they're doing. Investigators ask any other victims out there to contact them so they can add to Diaz's charges. Uh, he's praying on them. And, uh, you know, our number one goal was to, was to get these girls and get them, make sure they were safe. In Franklin County, Sam Smith, WKYT. Investigators with the Attorney General's office will examine Diaz's phone, contacts, and content tomorrow. State police are investigating what led up to a deadly crash in Laurel County this afternoon. That crash happened on Kentucky 80 near mile marker 8 near London. Troopers say Clifford Tucker from Texas pulled out in front of a tanker truck and the two crashed. We had a tractor trailer carrying uh, gasoline. It was heading west on Highway 80 towards Somerset. Passenger vehicle was in front of it. Uh, it made a right on Southern Road here on Highway 80. It went to make a U-turn, pulled into the path of the tractor trailer. The tractor trailer uh, and the passenger car had hit. A woman who was a passenger in Tucker's car went to UK Chandler Hospital in critical condition. State police say the semi driver was on his way to Somerset from Knoxville. He was not injured. Lexington police are trying to figure out who shot a man downtown this morning. Someone heard the man screaming on Burnett Avenue around 6. When police got there, they say the victim had a gunshot wound in his stomach and that he was talking and was having trouble breathing. A neighbor found the man in his front yard and helped him before police arrived. I was asleep, really, by maybe 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. And just, I woke up when I hear somebody screaming and yelling for help. And called the ambulance and police come in and paramedics and take it. He said, I hold my hand and this, and then he's sweating, shaking. And, Police do not know the victim's condition. Six people are recovering tonight after a shooting at a nightclub in Louisville. This morning around 3, police say someone fired shots at Cole's place on West Kentucky Street. Witnesses told them a man dressed in white opened fire on the crowd. One of the victims was a pregnant woman who delivered the baby right after the shooting. Mom and child are expected to be okay. The owner of the club says the shooter jumped the fence and began firing into the club's courtyard. The pastor of the church next door says there is rarely trouble there. Yeah, you know he's got security. he's got tight security, but then again, you know things do slip. They get through the crack. Police say Cole's place was holding a hip hop concert at the time of the shooting. They have not made any arrests. Officers say a Central Kentucky Music Center bus was turning into a parking garage on West Vine Street when the top of the bus hit the top of the parking garage. Two eight-year-olds and a ten-year-old went to the hospital. They are expected to be okay. Right now, police are not filing charges. They tell us there's no structural damage to the parking garage. The FBI is following up on nearly 250 leads as they try to nail down a motive for why a man attacked two military sites last week in Tennessee. Five service members died in the attacks. Kenneth Craig reports from Chattanooga. Police escorted a hearse carrying the body of Navy Petty Officer Randall Smith to the airport in Chattanooga Sunday. He and four Marines were killed last week when 24-year-old Mohammed Abdulaziz attacked two military sites. Kip Well's son Skip was on a temporary assignment that was just about to end when he was killed. We've been told within days of leaving and I've been told within weeks. Three days after the shooting rampage, FBI investigators are still struggling to learn and what motivated Abdulaziz. Muslims who knew his family are in disbelief. Just speechless. I mean, just, I mean, I, to this time, I'm still thinking about what he did. I mean, why did he do that? 
just don't make any sense. Late Saturday, the killer's family released this statement saying, There are no words to describe our shock, horror, and grief. For many years, our son suffered from depression. This growing memorial outside of the recruitment center shows just how much this community is grieving. It doesn't make sense that we fought so hard to keep this from happening, and in 2015, it's right here on our own land. At Sunday services, parishioners prayed for the fallen and honored their sacrifice. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Chattanooga, Tennessee. The family of the Chattanooga police officer injured in the shooting says he is doing well. The inmate who police say didn't return to Lexington Friday night after a work release is back in jail. Just before noon today, Rodney Bowman turned himself in to Lexington police. He was originally in the Fayette County Detention Center for theft by unlawful taking and tampering with physical evidence. He was supposed to be released on those charges today. Families packed the Dunbar Center in Lexington this afternoon for the Dirt Bowl's annual Super Sunday Games. The annual event moved locations after someone shot five people in Douglas Park last month. One man later died from his injuries. And the violence raised some concerns about park safety. Organizers hope to be back at Douglas Park next year. It's really like a big family reunion. Um, people come back that haven't been here for a while, you know, come to watch the games. The only thing different is we're actually indoors and we don't expect the type of crowd that we would have had at, at the park. Police say they can offer a greater level of security inside a gym compared to outdoors in a park. A group of motorcyclists braved the heat and storms today to help raise money for a good cause. The group calls themselves the Hillbillies, and they made the trip from Pikeville to Lexington to raise money for Shriners Children's Hospital. They also held a silent auction. The money goes to Shriners Hospitals for Children. It's an unrestricted gift, so it's used to pay for really all you see here, the staff, the care that we provide to the children. Organizers estimate they raised close to $70,000 this year. 